Uh, this is the sixth game of a match between Commodore 8 running on a smartphone versus Deep Shredder 10 running on an i7 uh, 2.2 gigahertz processor. Uh, the speed advantage for Commodore on a smart on a smartphone is negative 50. In other words, Deep Shredder is getting a 50-fold advantage in speed. That's not 50 percent. That's 50 times. Um, I measure these very carefully using running Komodo on the start position from the smartphone and then comparing it to its speed on the, sim on the same processor here and on the desktop i7 it was running at approximately 50 times faster, maybe 55. Um, the advantage in speed is considerable and the idea is therefore to show that in spite of a colossal hardware advantage for Deep Shredder Commodo on uh, much weaker hardware is able to still overcome the speed advantage and even then not just equalize the field but defeat Deep Shredder. Now this is nothing against Deep Shredder which is a great program uh, but in this particular version is from 2006. But it's merely to highlight how much progress is but has been done in pure software terms. There is a misunderstanding that because hardware has also advanced enormously in the last decade, that the big advantages, the big gains uh, in strength by engines over the past years is much due to the hardware. And while that's certainly true, the software cannot be underestimated. Now, in the first five games, um, three positions basically are being played uh, with reversed colors, meaning that Shredder gets white once, and so does Commodore. Uh, in the first five games, uh, Kamado has won three games and drawn two. The third position, this particular one, uh, is an Evans gamut and in the first game uh, Kamado with white uh, defeated Shredder after a really strange opening. Uh, Shredder got itself really tangled up in a very uh, passive position and was basically strangled positionally. Uh, and now it's uh, his turn to play uh, white and Commodore will defend the position with black. And this was the position from which they both played. Uh, the little phone over here uh, is because of a software that is connecting the phone via USB and will allow you to see exactly what's going on on the screen live and therefore you'll be able to follow the engine analysis. Now, chess base here. Uh, chess base for Android by far my favorite software and that's not just a shameless plug that's actually the truth I have several other versions of programs but the board on the smartphone for from chess base is just more pleasant uh, I'll show you first of all that I'm running Commodo as you can see here this is Commodo 8 for Android uses uh, four cores memory usage is normal. You can always change that setting. I haven't really found a need for it. Now the reason I'm not using Deep Shredder 8, or there is no, because there is no Deep Shredder 8, uh, is because the comment came from two very strong players who were ignorant of just how much software had advanced, and they contended that in the past 10 years it was all hardware. Now I I know there was no malice meant out of this, it was really just pure ignorance. Um, nevertheless, uh, in 2004 the best engine was probably Shredder 8, and the reason I'm not using Shredder 8 is because it's only able to run on one core, um, so I'm using a later version, a stronger version of Deep Shredder, uh, Deep Shredder 10, which is able to use all four cores, so that'll make it a more interesting game. Now just set up the position here. go. Now the first two positions were not like the Evans Gambit, which might seem like a strange choice for both Shredder and Commodore since they're both notoriously positional players. Um, there were Kings, Queen's Gambits, um, and the games will be posted in an article on Chessbase. Uh, nevertheless, they were not the most exciting games, um, and the idea here is to sort of try other types of positions, in this case an Evans Gambit. Okay. Wouldn't be fun if it wasn't accepted after all, so 
yeah, I'm forcing it. And here, obviously, there's a, a lot of lines possible. We can play bishop a5, bishop c5, bishop e7, bishop e6. These are all perfectly acceptable lines and have plenty of theory behind them. And this time, Commodore is playing black, so Commodore starts an analyzing. Now, one disadvantage here, it should be noted, is that sorry about that is that uh, Commodo on the smartphone uh, isn't designed to play against an opponent so I will have to basically tell it when to play I won't be telling it what to play obviously as you can see from the screen but I will be telling it when to play and how much to think um, in the previous games the both engines have chosen to spend as much as a minute on the first move um, sometimes even more. And here I'm going to let it think a little bit. Uh, let's just say an extra fly or so. Uh, as a rule, particularly in the opening, uh, Shredder has been really, well, I won't say out thinking, but let's just say that he's been thinking, he's been getting a lot deeper in the position with many more ply. And over here we can see depth 15 means that um, Kamino has already analyzed 15 ply, and we'll start here. Bishop d6. That's actually the same choice of uh, Deep Shredder from the first game. I won't accuse it of having gotten in trouble because of that. Even though it may seem like a strange move, it's actually hyper-theoretical and one of the best lines for black. And, well, Shredder is now analyzing. Shredder is getting, obviously, Ponder on, meaning that it will be able to think during Commodore's uh, move. And you can see Commodore's analyzing as well. Uh, the difference is, is that when I play it, he'll be using the hash table, but there won't be any moves that will be played instantly uh, because he had already predicted um, Shredder's move. Uh, as I said, I'll have to be manually telling it when to play, so I'll be following fairly closely what Deep Shredder's doing in terms of time management. I won't be trying to uh, reinvent the wheel here. Okay, d4. I'm going to reverse this so it doesn't look strange here. And as you can see, the engine is now, Commodore is now analyzing 13 ply. It's expecting queen e7. If memory serves, um, I believe Shredder played knight f6 in this position. It didn't play it immediately, so we'll uh, let Commodore analyze just a little bit deeper. In any case, it's a uh, similar time, as you can see. 15 minutes and 5 seconds, 15 minutes and 15, so by the next fly it should be pretty close to uh, the same time management spent. It's been kind of interesting watching the difference in evaluation between the two engines. Um, there are some radically opposing points of view on many positions in which Shredder thinks he's much, much better, possibly even one, and Commodore thinks otherwise, and vice versa. Uh, Taking a little bit longer to reach the next ply here. Okay, it's done. And oh, played knight f6. Well, what do you know? And Shredder played instantly. It had predicted the move. And Shredder thinks he's doing a little bit better. And Kamado thinks he's doing a little bit better himself. Looks like they already disagree. But that's okay because in the last game, that was exactly what happened also. Schrader thought he was doing much, much better, and uh, Kamado thought it was balanced, or even he was a little bit better. Let's this pie here. Okay. Let's 
See the time spent, 39 seconds. I think I'll increase the size of the font here, just to make it a little easier to read. There you go. Maybe even one size larger. I have a feeling that some people will be watching this. It's a relatively small screen. I'm not using the scrolling uh, evaluation here. Traders in deep thought. And he played rookie one. Now, I don't actually know what the proper theory in this particular line is. I've played the Evans Gambit a little bit with white. But I uh, usually played the more classical lines, uh, bishop a5, bishop c5, and uh, bishop e7, which was actually uh, played by Garry Kasparov, won a very famous game, I think it was against Anand, in the 90s. And as soon as <clears throat> Commodore has finished his play here, you see 50, depth 15, oh, there we go, D16. Now, the reason why I was waiting for that D equals 16 to be reached it is because uh, while it said depth 15 here and D equals 15, basically that meant he was in the middle of analyzing the next play, and he was analyzing the various moves. So I was basically letting him finish his analysis um, and play the chosen move. And the evaluations you're seeing here are from White's point of view. So basically what that means, if there's a plus score, it's in favor of White, and if there's a negative score, it doesn't mean he thinks he's worse, it means that it's in favor of Black. Now here, clearly, Shredder thinks he's doing much better. Well, he's up a pawn. Um, he's down a pawn, sorry. But uh, he has a uh, nice uh, space advantage. It's going to have an easier way of time of uh, developing himself. Okay, my BD2. Should be pointed out that Shredder in the last game, during much of the opening, thought he was practically dead one and was displaying evaluations of uh, minus 0 0.70, minus 0 0.80. Remember, he was playing black. Um, while Commodore thought it was plus 0 0.10, plus 0 0.15. Wasn't winning or anything, but thought he had definite compensation. And Shredder didn't really agree with that. I have no idea who was actually right, but as it turned out, The engine, uh, Commodore managed to outplay Shredder in the position, and uh, Shredder got into a really nasty bind, was unable to move his pieces around, and was slowly strangled. In the game, Shredder had chosen to develop uh, his uh, white squared bishop with a6, b5, bishop b7, then played uh, queen b8, queen a7, maybe inspired by the great Akiba Rubinstein, who played a very famous game with a maneuver like that, but of course the position was completely different still. It uh, came to mind. There should be two. You can see he still thinks he's a little bit better. And Kamada thinks he's a little bit better. I guess that just shows that uh, Grandmasters aren't the only ones to uh, 
clearly disagree on the position of valuations. Engines do too, and not by a little bit. Now, if uh, Commodo had been had uh, had benefited from, let's say, an ELO software evaluation by uh, Oh, 150 or 200 ELO only in the last eight years since Deep Shredders from 2006. What that would mean is that with a 50 fold speed edge in hardware, Deep Shredder should still completely destroy Komodo, and that has not happened so far. Rook B8, well, what do you know? should be said that uh, White's development scheme here is pretty standard. Obviously, you can't play bishop a3 with the bishop still on d6. Um, but uh, knight bd2 or queen b3 looks pretty normal. And now both positions, both engines are, I think that the position is relatively equal. That's really strange. What's really strange is because uh, Shredder is now thinking, is now showing a, uh, an evaluation that was in favor of black, while Commodo is uh, now showing a slightly favorable position for white. Why don't you guys make up your minds? I'll have to play a little bit faster, otherwise uh, Commodore's going to end up getting uh, in trouble on time here. Okay, it looks like he thinks that uh, that was a terrible move. We're to judge by the sudden change in evaluation. He's now showing a significant advantage for white. <clears throat> it wasn't just a couple of moves ago. what he's predicting though. He has a significant uh, space advantage, but uh, he already had that. It hasn't changed. He's not threatened to win any material that I could see, neither with my eyes nor with their evaluations. Let's see. He's protecting bishop b5. He's planning on bishop b5, and that's actually the same move that uh, Commodore's predicting. Even though there are a lot of really famous games uh, with the Evans, mostly from uh, the romantic period of chess. Uh, I have to say that one of my absolute favorite games that I ever saw with uh, the Evans Gambit uh, is fairly recent. I saw it on a chess-based DVD in the uh, games collection by Nigel Short. And uh, Nigel, who's actually fairly well-renowned for uh, playing these offbeat openings on occasion, uh, played it against uh, Ponomaryov. And 
it was an incredibly inspired game. I mean, he really was just letting pieces hang left and right. He played some very creative moves. And then he converted um, his positional advantage um, beautifully. So it was really a great game all around. If you have the opportunity to check it out, I strongly recommend it. Nigel Short's uh, games collection is actually a lot of fun. Some really good games. Some of his very famous ones, like uh, his win over Timon with uh, the King H2, King G3, uh, King H4 uh, uh, King maneuver, which is by now absolutely historic. But there are a lot of other really cool games and uh, some really interesting commentary as well. The game I mentioned against Ponomaryov is actually not in the database, as it should be said. According to uh, Nigel, it was played in a private match um, against Ponomaryov, uh, a training match that they played, and uh, well, that was one of the games. Let's finish his ply, and then we'll execute the move. Notice the depth 15, D equals 15. Let's play it. D6. I'm not 100% if, uh, sure if uh, this uh, microphone is picking up the background sound. I should say that I live in Rio de Janeiro uh, in front of a fairly large avenue and it is possible to hear the traffic sounds uh, from behind, uh, trucks, buses, and whatnot when uh, the light closes and opens. I'm hoping the microphone is barely picking it up, it's really unclear, I'll find out later. But uh, come what may, unless it's uh, unusable, uh, the video will go up as is. Shredder seems to be changing his mind a lot. C4, okay. That's not the most expected move, I have to mention, I have to say. But uh, on the other hand, it does uh, add pressure to e5. Since obviously he's threatening now, d takes e5. Which would win a piece. Place bishop before getting the piece out of the way and insta played by Shredder getting some time on the clock. Well, it's not boring, I'll say that much. It may not be some wild romantic attack, but uh, it's a strange position, difficult position. And again, Shredder insta plays. I won't spend a lot of time thinking here. He's actually starting to like his own position, it seems, judging from the evaluation. And he plays bishop takes d2. And as we can see here, the position uh, is now fairly well advanced. Just played knight takes d2. And the position is now uh, 
in favor of, well, it's not even clear. It's probably in favor of white, possibly black. I think the end, in the end, we've even judged that the position is fairly balanced. Okay, we'll have a play knight f4. Play queen c3 instantly. As we're falling back on time, I'm going to have to accelerate his play a little bit. Give him an extra fly here. That said, his uh, move 96 looks pretty uh, normal, so shouldn't cost him anything. It's nothing really strange. Shredder is becoming very enthusiastic. Jam shut up the bishop, the knight, sorry. That's because obviously the knight belongs on the long diagonal uh, where it can exert maximum strength. <clears throat> There's a chess, uh, it's a proverb uh, in Brazil uh, which says that, which is called uh, the rule of the fist. And the idea is basically if you can make a fist around a bunch of squares in which all of the uh, number of, a large number of the pieces are located, uh, that particular side is in trouble because of lack of coordination, lack of uh, uh, harmony. And we can see that really here. I mean, knight seven really. Obviously, you can remaneuver that with uh, knight six, knight seven, but uh, knight c five, but. And we can see that Shredder is also falling back on time as well. Only eight minutes left. <clears throat> Without much ado. Play back. It's not as if he's going to give away the pawn, so. No surprise, after all. And 
the question is which piece? Although, to be fair, both engines think uh, it's a no-brainer. Taking here, forcing the knight away. And take on c4, presumably. So, how do things stand? Well, unless white somehow very quickly shoves f4, f5, I'd say the whole idea of a kingside attack is uh, dead in the water. d7 pawn here is obviously fairly backwards, but on the other hand, he's got some pretty well-advanced uh, queenside pawns, so it's... Uh, Still unclear as to who stands better. And both engines are starting to like Black's position, it would seem. There is a consensus after all. Faster here. <clears throat> Bishop a6. Trying to fix his... Uh, extra material and passed on. It would seem that uh, Commodore is starting to really think that he's uh, taking the upper hand here. Uh, the valuation is now significantly in his favor. It wasn't so uh, pronounced uh, just a few moves there before. So it looks like he thinks that uh, his material advantage is going to uh, be a deciding factor. As you can see, his valuation has now gone to uh, minus 0 0.71, whereas uh, Deep Shredder is also beginning to show a significant advantage uh, for white, uh, for black, sorry. And he plays f4, going for counterplay, which seems like a fairly standard approach here. Really can't argue with that. The no question is uh, whether you can do more with that. So that's part of the problem, obviously, with f5 is that e5 will be hanging. d6, undermining the pawn fangs that is coming his way. Back to six, 
x. And there is a time increment, so <clears throat> the fact that it's down to three and a half minutes isn't actually a big factor. And that would be my dog, in case you're wondering. So it looks like we have an exchange sacrifice coming up, which doesn't seem to daunt Komodo any bit. He's still predicting a big advantage. Probably correct, but it's not obvious how he'll be able to advance those pawns with uh, the aid of that bishop alone. The pawns aren't very mobile, it should be pointed out. e4 pawn is uh, pretty well stopped, although it might be subject to an attack by the bishop on b7. <clears throat> and the b pawn isn't going anywhere with the a pawn still in the way. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe it's all just, maybe these are all targets. Not hindrances. And the reason why Shredder has begun to think so much is because his evaluation has suddenly changed. It was relatively equal, and suddenly it's minus 0 0.46 in his uh, disfavor. Uh, and as a rule, and now it's minus 0 0.70. So as a rule, one can see that once he realizes that he's in serious trouble, he starts trying to figure out whether he's made a miscalculation or what he should do to save the position. Uh, and he's starting to agree with uh, Kamado on the valuation. We can see that they both now think it's uh, minus 0 0.70 in Black's favor. And he spent one and a half minutes on that last move. protect c4, and it doesn't take a rocket science to realize that uh, bishop b7 uh, would uh, be a serious nuisance.
One minute and 16 seconds. I thought my G6 was bad. Time management. Huh. It says a lot about what Shredder thinks about the position, frankly. Queen e7 really is a much of a threat, frankly. Since he could, since uh, black could always play queen c8, queen b7, and throw out the queen. Exchanging pieces doesn't really seem at all realistic here. It's actually quite clever, if you consider it. Not just because he's attacking the pawn on h4, but after g3, the white squares around the king will be very weak, and with the queen and bishop battery, he'll have a significant, uh, he'll have gained a significant uh, advantage positionally from that little uh, maneuver. Sure enough, he's now looking at the long, at the diagonal between c8 and h3, and uh, very unpleasant penetration. Also, queen e6 is uh, perfectly possible, attacking f6, and keeping the pressure on top of the e4 square as well. So,
queen e6. The real question now is uh, whether he'll be able to uh, convert his material advantage with the extra pawn here. It's looking good now, particularly now that the pawn is free to move. Whether or not that'll be enough is unclear, though. Maybe it's clear to the engines because their evaluation is now approaching uh, minus two pawns in favor of black. And since materially that uh, advantage isn't actually on the board, one can only presume that uh, they're looking at this from uh, the positional factors and they're seeing considerably deeper in any case. Minus three, wow. I guess it's adios muchachos. When a human reaches that, you can still hope. I mean, we've seen crazy turnarounds, but uh, from an engine's point of view, unless uh, there's some kind of fortress involved, minus three is pretty much it. Now, it needs to be pointed out that as long as I actually make the moves within 10 seconds, uh, no time will be uh, discounted from uh, Black's position because there's a 10 second increment, so the, ten, the time will be maintained. That was made in 9 seconds, which basically means that uh, Black has gained an extra second on this little exchange. Which is just to say that uh, in spite of the fact that there's only 20 seconds left on the clock, Black isn't in any immediate danger of uh, losing on time, provided I don't do anything crazy that uh, costs common of the game. And the past pawns are starting to really make themselves felt. The lack of space also for the king and uh, the queen infiltration are going to probably decide it. They both see the position as uh, minus three, so in theory it's uh, probably just a matter of time. More a question of when and not a question of if. Clearly, he's, we're looking at uh, uh, 
the beginning of the end, b2. Looks like queen takes b2 is 4, so I really don't see what else you can do. Queen d3 check. Again, pretty much forced. And Shredder resigns. So there you have it. Commodore running on an Android system with uh, against Deep Shredder, a program from eight years ago, one of the top engines of its time, probably just behind Ripka in 2006. And despite the fact that Shredder was running on hardware that is 50 times faster than that of the smartphone, it nevertheless lost and lost handily. And I think that should demonstrate pretty clearly how much software has advanced. It hasn't just equalized the 50-fold difference in speed. It was also able to use this with a significant advantage that would make four wins for Kamado and two draws out of six games. And that's a pretty crushing advantage, all things told.